dear students so we are going to uh, talk about uh, derivative of activation functions in today's topic of unit 3 so uh, before we actually dive into this particular topic of derivative of activation function first of all we have to understand why this topic is so important okay so unit 3 actually deals with back propagation algorithm so uh, before we actually dive into backpropagation algorithm, we have to understand why, I um, mean, how, in what way we are going to study it. So, neural network model expression, they are very complex and there are millions of uh, parameters, model parameters which are present. And whenever you are trying uh, for optimization, uh, you always rely on deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow. Okay. So, what do they do? They automatically calculate the gradients of the network parameters. They automatically calculate the gradient descent algorithm iteratively and they help you to provide with optimi optimized value of your network parameters. Okay. Unless and until the perform uh, unless and until the performance meets the requirement. So now the main algorithms which are actually implemented in these deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow are back propagation algorithm and gradient descent algorithm. Of course, gradient descent is a part of back propagation. So now, for understanding the principles of these two algorithms will be very, very helpful to understand the role of deep learning frameworks. So, before we actually introduce the backpropagation algorithm in a multi-layer neural network, we will first try to understand what is this concept of derivatives and especially the derivatives of activation functions and loss functions. So, when you understand these two topics and then you can very easily derive the gradient propagation law of multi-layer neural network. So, we are actually moving step by step towards back propagation algorithm in this the first stage is to calculate the derivatives of the activation function. So, the very first activation function which we have already studied is a sigmoid function, right? And uh, the sigmoid function is mathematically written as this that is 1 by 1 plus epa minus x. So, this is a very simple mathematical derivative of a sigmoid function which I have already covered in my previous class. Simple uh, formula of a derivative and rearranging it properly to achieve it back in the form of a sigmoid function will give you the gradient of a sigmoid function as sigmoid function into 1 minus sigmoid function. Now, when you look into the picture, you can see uh, the sky blue line stands for the sigmoid function and this purple uh, waveform gives you the plotting of its derivative. So, you can see uh, it's a nice bell shaped structure when you uh, go for the derivative of a sigmoid function. Now, next is a tan h function and mathematically it is written as e power z minus e power minus z by e power z plus e power minus z. And simply you are going to apply the derivative to the tan hyperbolic function. So, u by v formula u into v dash minus v into u dash by v square and simply you are going to again calculate it mathematically rearranging it only to get again in the form of a tan hyperbolic function which is now squared version. So, derivative of tan hyperbolic function is 1 minus tan h of z whole square. Now, you can see here how do you plot it. So, you can see the sky blue reference waveform is for tan h function. And again, you can see it's a bell-shaped uh, uh, stable uh, waveform for its derivative. So, you can see we have now derived uh, two uh, activation functions and their gradients. And I think I have already taught you this in my previous classes. Now, moving on to ReLU function. Now, before I actually move on to this activation function of ReLU and its gradient, I really want to put forward what is the significance of this ReLU function. Okay, so before the ReLU function was widely used, the most widely used activation function was only sigmoid. But sigmoid function was very much prone to a phenomenon called as gradient dispersion. So what is this gradient dispersion? So you know that when you have a multi-layer network of deep neural network and the number of the layers become very, very high, when you are calculating back propagation, you will imply a gradient descent algorithm to it. So, you all know that the updated value or the new parameters of a gradient descent are old parameters minus you have learning rate into the gradient function. So, now what will happen if the gradient becomes very small, then there is no updation of these old values. What new values will not be updated for your parameters of the model. 
right so as a result what will happen is the deep neural networks cannot be trained effectively and they retain as a shallow neural network only even if the number of the layers are increased so this was before relu was introduced when relu got introduced this particular phenomena of gradient dispersion was removed and you could increase the total number of layers of your neural network so that it could actually uh, be called as a deep neural network right so this was about significance of relu function now moving on to calculating its derivative so you can see this is a mathematical uh, equation for a relu function and you can see the sky blue line over here determines this relu function you can see negatively it doesn't affect but positive uh, the output retains same as an in input and when you calculate the derivative of it it is very simple all you can see that the derivative for relu function is always a constant value of 1 for all the positive values and it is uh, zero for all the negative values so why it is so important now you can see because the gradient of this activation function is a constant value of 1 that means during the process of back propagation it is not going to amplify the gradient which may cause the phenomenon of gradient explosion it may not also shrink the gradient causing the uh, gradient vanishing problem okay so these two in these two ways uh, relu is quite a helpful activation function that you can see because the gradient is always one now coming to the concept of leaky relu which is just a little bit twitch into the main model of relu where you can also have a little bit very small value in the negative axis also so you can see that leaky relu has got the value as x for all positive value and a fraction of x for all the negative value so when you calculate the derivative of this leaky relu what you could observe is for the positive value of course it retains as one same as relu but unlike relu leaky relu does not hold a zero as its derivative on the negative side rather it is going to hold a small value p which may take up a value of about 0.01 or 0.02 so this was about uh, a leaky relu activation function so to calculate back propagation algorithm for a multi layer network the very first step is to calculate the derivative of activation function which we have just now done in our next class we will see how do you calculate the derivative of loss functions